Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, host also of Artie's talk show, Crosstalk. Well, Peter, we've come to that moment in the week that nice. many have been dreading for seven days. We are going to be handing out our thumbs ups and thumbs downs. So a lot of people had better be <laughs> grip their chairs very firmly. All right, I'll go uh, first with a... Um, a thumbs up, and that is the Biden administration's apparent freeze on a package of uh, military hardware for uh, Ukraine. Now, um, the administration, the administration is of course backing down because there has been a lot of accusations against it, saying, "What, what the hell? You, you, you're denying our gallant ally the means to defend itself against." And we, we, we try to impeach her. We try to impeach her, <laughs> a president, uh, you know, you know, just over a year ago for, for doing exactly the same thing. So Jen Psaki has now doubled down, saying, "Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we've given them all the um, the money that was." Um, appropriated by Congress. This was an extra dollop of money that we were going to give uh, Ukraine uh, because it was being threatened by invasion from Russia. And since we got soaked up with Russia and Russia didn't invade, there's no real reason uh, to give them this money. I, I, I don't believe her for one minute, uh, but, but nonetheless, it is very entertaining uh, to come across this. And <laughs> if, if you remember the impeachment, Remember, one after another, those witnesses who came before the impeachment committee of Adam Schiff, they all had said in the mantra, we're giving money to Ukraine so that they can fight Russia over there, so we don't have to fight Russia over here. Many, many, many witnesses actually used that, those very words. So, you know, it looks like Ukraine isn't going to be fighting Russia over there. Maybe we'll soon be fighting Russia over here. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and the interesting thing is that when um, uh, the, uh, when we had the Obama administration, they um, uh, refused to send lethal weapons to Ukraine, but Donald Trump did. Okay. Um, and again, this ridiculous impeachment here. Uh, and then this, this uh, equivocation from Saki. I mean, we're going to have to look at alternative sources. I don't believe one word that comes out of her mouth. We already listened oh, to her. That was what but that the was the statement that she made. Uh, that's, that's, it's on the White House website, that, that convoluted statement she made. So, yeah, <laughs> take it for what it is. Yeah, it's kind of the, the laughs on you now, okay? Right. And, and uh, you know, uh, you, you impeach uh, a president for it, and this one you just um, wag your finger, okay? I mean, George, it just... It, 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 it's one of it, it's my third uh, thumbs down, but I'll just jump into it since we're uh, talking about this here. Is that the media is doing such a disservice to the public still again? I mean, on this coverage of this summit, okay, uh, we have already talked about this separately. Uh, the, the outcome of the summit was more or less what I had hoped, what we had predicted, right. is basically putting a cap on this. Okay, right. at least the administration is trying right. to do that because this has got accelerated out of control. And if one thing was shown, and, and, and you know, I, I'm not complimenting Biden here because I think he did a pretty bungling job, but it basically shows that there is a state to state process and a, a, an agreed process of communicating to one another, okay? Your ranting and raving doesn't help, okay? It doesn't help anyone. Okay, and so and like what you uh, you brought up your first uh, uh, thumbs is in dealing with uh, Ukraine. Well, it, at the end of the day, folks, uh, Biden kicked the can down the road. Okay, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's what he did. Okay, and it may be something that you know we're going to have to uh, confront um, rather so uh, sooner than later. Maybe okay, but uh, essentially this, but the media is it's all through the prism of Donald Trump still. Okay, that everyone is imprisoned. Right. With Donald Trump in their head, the comparison, the contrast. Right. I don't give a hoot. Right. I care about the substance and the right. policy. The problem, the problem, of course, is one that was uh, is the the media's uh, creation. I mean, if you have um, uh, five years of the most ridiculous, nonsensical hysteria. Uh, that Russia stole uh, the American election by some mysterious means to give it to uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump was somehow uh, carrying out, again, in a baffling, mysterious way, uh, Putin's agenda. 
uh, and you keep drumming it. And then you, 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 you try one impeachment that you can't get that off the ground. Then you try a second impeachment but that, you know, you, you don't get anywhere with that. All premised on the idea that Trump is serving uh, the Kremlin's agenda. It's very hard then to switch around and say, oh yeah, but um, when Biden does it, it's actually okay. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that, that's because, because you know, they said all of the things that Biden said um, this week, we said, okay, that's reasonable enough. But so why was it, why were you completely getting hysterical when, when Trump tried to do this? I mean, why were you, you know, you were calling him a traitor, you were calling him a, a, a creature of the Kremlin, you know, when he was doing precisely what Biden was doing. So it, this is a, you know, the media have got themselves into this box and they can't really get themselves out with any, well, even the remotest uh, credibility. I mean, the, and the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people in these legacy media, corporate media, they've, they've made, the, they've cut their teeth on this. They don't want it to go away. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's the only thing they think about. And, 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 they, and, and they probably know less about Russia than they did before because they're just eating up myths and right. stereotypes and everything. But I mean, you know, what's the next Russia story I'm going to write? I mean, it's, it's, it's a reflex right now. And, right. And, and Joe Biden is basically saying, well, this is about as far as we've gotten it to date. Right. Um, not much to write home, folks, no, okay? No, no, I mean, no. it's better to say, you know, there, there was no confrontation and said, you know, you know, we're at each other's throats. So we walked away without shaking hands. I mean, right. is that what you want? I mean, because, you know, you people, you know, you, you journalists, you're the ones who are not going to, there's no downside for you for your very stupid and bad behavior. Right. Okay, right. so stop being so snotty, okay? Right. Well, that's it. But, but, but that, that was the idiocy. I mean, and the fact is that, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't forget what went on during those five years. I mean, it was an absolute bloody disgrace. I mean, the, the idea of uh, calling a president a traitor, I mean, you get executed for treason. I mean, the idea that me media are just peddling this stuff, oh, it's a traitor, traitor, and you don't have any evidence, none whatsoever. And in fact, all of the evidence points against it, and you just keep repeating this, and thereby sabotaging, deliberately sabotaging any possible rapprochement between America and Russia, which would be good for both America, Russia, and the rest of the world. You do this to score some domestic political right. points. I mean, it's loathsome. And, and, and the coverage on Fox News was obnoxious. I mean, totally obnoxious. You know, they call Pompeo, bring him in, wheel him out. Okay. You know, I mean, again, worse the better. That's the, and, and, and this is, they're tearing a page from MSNBC and, and CNN. It's right. just the same odious behavior. Right. And, and what they have done, I don't know if they've actually used the term, maybe some of their guests have, but he's a traitor too now for, right. for not well, essentially wanting to go to war. Okay, I mean, it, it's this ridiculous behavior. It is right. so irresponsible. Right. Right. All right, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, patting Joe on the back. I mean, um, I don't, I don't know why this couldn't have been done on Zoom. I don't know why this all was. We went to through all of this here, and we predicted it spot on. Okay, um, and and and. And at the end of the day, if it's if it's reestablish a dialogue and channels, great, fine. No, I, think I, don't, I, mean, I don't give a hoot about Biden. I, no, I really I don't. That, Everybody knows that about me. I care about the process and I care well, about politics. Well, that's the whole point that, um, you know, occasionally even, you know, politicians that we uh, despise, such as Biden and before him Obama, do things that we have to say, yeah, good. In the same way, we approved of when um, Obama uh, went signed on to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Say, good, fine. Uh, Obama uh, recognized uh, Cuba. You know, say, fine. You know, that's it. These are sensible policies. Yeah. You know, we also had you know, all the terrible things Obama did. So in the same way, you're saying with Biden, okay, Biden has done something uh, sensible. I mean, he was kind of forced into it by having pursued a kind of disastrous policy the first three months. Um, but okay, fine. Now, you know, fine. give 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 him his due. Um, I don't think at the moment anything there's anything much to write home about, but fine, give him his due. But for Fox News now to get you know hysterical, oh, he's selling out the country to Russia. What the hell is he doing? I mean, you know what, you know, you know he's allowing Nord Stream 2. Oh my god, Trump, <laughs> Trump stopped Nord Stream 2. Trump stopped it. You know, when did he stop anything? <laughs> Make make your last will and testament and 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 dig in. What what did they have? Um, 
What did, what, what did we have in the during the Cold War when you, you went into your basement? You know, a bunker, build your bunker. It's over, the world's over. I mean, the, the, uh, absolutely irresponsible juvenile behavior. And it's one segment after another. It is just utterly absurd, okay? So, you know, all those people at Fox that were uh, p uh, patting themselves on the back, you're committing the same stupid sins, okay? Yep. So grow up. The, we, we've used the term already twice here. Nothing to write home about. Sometimes that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I, I agree. So anyway, my next thumbs up, again, you know, it's connected with that, was um, uh, Putin's uh, uh, news conference. It, it was a stark contrast uh, between, of course, Biden's embarrassing performance uh, before the media. Um, Putin answered questions from hostile Western journalists. Uh, he gave very succinct uh, answers. Biden did not have any uh, Russian journalists uh, present at his presser. Uh, Biden only called on uh, reporters that it was already prearranged beforehand that he would call on them. Um, and the things that Putin said <laughs> were very, very uh, pertinent. I mean, you know, said, because of course they were talking about, oh, Navalny and Navalny's organization. He said, look, these organizations are financed by the US government. The US government deems Russia has said, there's legislation on the books that says Russia is an enemy of the United States. Therefore, we regard those <laughs> organizations with suspicions. Why would the United States be funding organizations in a country that it regards as an enemy? We look at the suspicion. And then, and then he talked about this extremism. So look, we are very worried about violence. We've seen what happens in the United States. We saw Black Lives Matter. And he said, really, you know, we, the Soviet Union, historically always supported the aspirations of African-Americans, but we don't like violence. And we don't want this kind of thing in our country. He talked about pogroms. He used the pogroms about the, the protests that took place uh, last year. Uh, that's a big word to use in Russia, pogroms. Um, and said, so we don't want anything like that. So that's why when the courts uh, judge organization to be extremist, because they consider them uh, or, you know, ones that instigate violence. And he said, yeah, these, these organizations do instigate violence. They seek confrontation with the police in order to have violence for all the media to be there on hand and you know transmit these images around the world. Yeah, and, and so the US government is trying to get rid of the Confucius Institutes from China yeah. because they're funded by the Chinese government to apparently sow um, uh, confusion and discontent in the United States. But the United States uh, has the right to fund organizations to do the same thing in Russia. And Russia shouldn't be doing anything about it. Right. I mean, it goes back to Joe Biden's. You know, you know, you shouldn't meddle in other people's oh, democracies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I even even his allies had a hard time <laughs> swallowing that it's, one. It's right? like, you know, I mean, how would the world respond if the United States started interfering in other countries' democracy? Hmm, let me think. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just so breathtaking. Okay, that's because you know, you know, Job is he's he's been doing this for fifty years, and he's well trained, even in his current mental state of being able to create that partition. Like you know, yeah, we were you know we lie, cheat, and steal, but we believe in democracy. That's I mean, here's the perfect right. you know, uh, in 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 one place, you know, they both can be true at the same time, and they don't. There's no dissonance inside. Okay. It's because of exceptionalism, because we do it, it's okay. That's always the case. We do it, it's okay. Anyone else doesn't, it's not okay. And that's All why, right. back to my, when Putin gave that news conference, uh, the media response was, was just outrage. I mean, they, they, just, they just went absolutely crazy. How dare he talk like this? How dare he make these points? Well, yeah. You don't like what he's saying. I mean, yeah, he's saying you, you, you because you say he, you, you're pointing to repression in Russia and says, "Well, I'm looking at what happened after January the sixth. You've got hundreds of people that you're bringing criminal charges against. You know, many of them have just done nothing except trespassing. Uh, they, you know, they they held in solitary confinement, and you you're lecturing us." You know, I can beat up on my little brother, but you can't. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's what it's all about. Right. Okay. And, and, and putting um, America's sins on display in a foreign capital, the horror of it. Okay. Now, what I would just tell 
the American people, maybe that's the best medicine to stop this horrific foreign policy that is enacted in your name, okay? All around the world. If it's in the Middle East, it's uh, drumming up a war with Russia over Ukraine. And, and if, you want, if you want to start poking at the Chinese, the Chinese have a well-oiled media operation, soft power operation. They're not going to let one thing pass them. Now, one thing, they catch everything. And if you want to go down this path, it's going to be, it'll be met fire with fire. Okay. And and constantly questioning about some meaningless, worthless person like Navalny, how does that change relationships between two countries? Right. And how, should it? Is, it? is it worth it? That's okay, right. no. Right. Okay. No, I because think it's, it shows that sort of the time warp that um, uh, much of Western journalism is in. I mean, they still think, well, this is 1974. Yeah, yeah. About Solzhenitsyn and Sakharov. No, you know, those days have gone. You know, you gotta, you gotta come up with a new, new script. I mean, it's a different world. Different, you know, it's a, Russia's a different country. Navalny is not Solzhenitsyn and Sakharov. But they still, they still have the same mentality. I mean, it's... <laughs> okay, look, Navalny, if he was poisoned or not, or self-poisoned, or it was his underwear, or it was a, a bottle of water, was he coerced to return to Russia? Right. No. Yeah. Or, or can Russia, I mean, if we take the pandemic out of the equation, are Russians trapped in their own country? No, they can leave. They can pick up stakes, right. go. Right. If they're accepted someplace, you can go. Right, right, right. right. Okay, sure. yeah. all righty. Uh, my thumbs up, which I say with great um, uh, pleasure, Jimmy Dore. Um, Jimmy Dore over the last week, uh, particularly, but over the last few months, has really taken on the Young Turks and he's done it splendidly, okay? And he's shown the Young Turks and Cenk Yugurtfer what they are, absolute frauds, okay? Frauds in capital letters, okay? And um, I won't go into the intricate details. You can go to his uh, own uh, YouTube page and because it's, it's quite lengthy, a lot of it here. But it, it shows um, it shows who has good faith and who has bad faith uh, when it comes to progressive politics. I'm very interested in progressive politics at a distance, okay, because I like to be forced to think, okay. Um, um, uh, uh, democratic liberals are brain dead, like the GOP is brain dead, okay? But there's um, um, uh, uh, populists, uh, uh, people, uh, conservatives, and there are populists on the left. And I think we're having the best conversations out there because I do believe in um, uh, some kind of um, uh, crossover, cro cross fertilization on a number of issues, like healthcare, for example. Uh, 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 real people on the left, are, are anti-war. We're anti-war. There's a lot of things that we can talk about, but I, 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 I'm very, very pleased to watch this fraudulent um, uh, organization and fraud, uh, uh, these frauds that are associated with it be taken down a few pegs. I mean, we're looking at, you know, they're flatlining right now, okay? And I have, I'll ha I want to talk a little bit about that later in another one of my thumbs down, but um, I, I don't know if you've been following any of it, uh, George. Well, we thought we had a, uh, a podcast um, uh, earlier this week, and I think that um, there's clearly, we've got to be um, very worried about the, the sort of the the cruise missile left, I think, as Edward Herman I think, referred to them, the, you know, the people who are, well, we're right on your side, we're, we're on the left, you know, we're, we're for Bernie Sanders, you know, we're, you know, right, we're, we're fighting on the barricades. And yet, strangely enough, they're always on hand to support whatever the military intervention is doing. They're on hand to spread the Western propaganda line. You're talking about the Young Turks. You're talking about the Young Turks. About the young Turks. Sorry? You're talking about the Young Turks. Yeah, exactly, the Young Turks. I mean, so we, they, there they are repeating uh, the stuff about Assad. Assad is a murderous dictator. He's a monster. Anybody who's, who questions um, the, uh, the poison gas attacks, he's, a, he's an, an Assadist. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's, he's on the payroll of Assad. Um, in in the, the same way that uh, any, anybody who uh, questions the uh, Russiagate, uh, you know, you're all Putinist. So it is a very interesting uh, phenomenon, the sort of the cruise missile left, who are always uh, happy to be spreading Western propaganda, but posing as figures on the left. You know, we're we're you know we're we're really we're, we're critics of uh, U U.S. foreign policy. We're critics of uh, the deep state, fraudulent. So yeah, absolutely.
Yeah, I, I, the the uh, and of course, you know, Julian Assange is a Russian puppet, and all that's of it, this. exactly. They were attacking on Julian Assange, that, that, all, all of that as well. So, uh, all, uh, okay. keep it up, Jimmy. Keep it up, Jimmy, because okay. a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Are... Yeah. Okay. Um, so now, um, a few thumbs uh, down, um, which is the um, uh, you know, if you look at the the G seven and uh, NATO. <laughs> Uh, do, uh, dues, you know, they, they would come along and issue these long, long, long um, communiques. I mean, you know, it, you know, it's always like book length communiques. Again, always an ind indication that you don't have anything very much to say. So you're just putting together lots, lots of verbiage to hide the lack of content. But the strange thing is, is that not, they, they never seem to address any of the issues that presumably they, uh, these governments, the, the people who vote for these governments would be most concerned with. Now, let us think of um, the issue of migration. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's already a big issue. It's going to be an even bigger issue. I mean, if we're just looking at, let's look at Africa and the massive uh, exponential growth, almost exponential growth in population in Africa, that's going to become a serious problem for Europe as they move and, and the United States, because it's now clear that even on the US border, it's by no means just any longer of people from Central America who, who are crossing into uh, the United States. I mean, it's people from Africa, people from all over the world that are going to the border and crossing. So that is a serious issue uh, for much of the Western world. And, you know, again, NATO doesn't have any answers to that. Uh, concurrent with that, is there'll be growth in terrorism. Uh, again, no seem to have any kind of issues with that. Instead, they're playing all this ridiculous great power politics, but neither Russia nor China pose any particular threat to the G7 or to NATO. This is a direct uh, palpable threat and something that you know the voters in many countries are very concerned about. I mean, look, you know, look at France. I mean, got regional elections uh, tomorrow uh, in France, and you know the expectation is that Marine Le Pen is going to do very well. Why is she doing well? I think the French are very concerned that they, <laughs> you know, they may soon be completely overwhelmed uh, by migration that they have no means of controlling, and no, no one in, in the Western world seems to be interested in trying to bring it under control. You know, you know what the G seven and NATO are like to me. The G seven and G uh, uh, and NATO, they're they're like um, living in their house. It is completely on fire, and you get up on the phone, you call the police, and you say, "I'd like to report a microaggression across the street right. as their house is right. burning down." Right. Right. That, that, that's it. That's it. And you know, and, and they go on, going on and on about Russia. I mean, there there is you know, other than Poland and the Baltic states, there's really no one. <laughs> Europe sitting there worrying. Mm, wonder what Putin is up to. I'm, I'm getting really worried about the Kremlin. And it's just, it seems to be a very hostile and dangerous. Mount. No one thinks that. And again, you know, with China, I mean, they don't. They don't get it. They think, hey, well, China's bringing in a lot of money. Why, you know, I mean, China's going to be building some university in in Hungary. I mean, maybe it may well be a terrible university. Probably will be. But it's it's money. It's going to be jobs. People say, yeah, we, we want money. We want jobs. I, a, a couple of years ago, I was at an OSCE um, uh, con fab in Vienna, and I was an official representative of the Russian Federation. And so everybody, you know, it, and, the, and then the agenda of Ukraine, and you could just see, you know, the Ukrainians all got you know straightened their back and all that, really proud. It's their time, but everybody else is like, oh, here we go. Right. Okay. Here. <laughs> It's like that meme you saw with, again, I think it was one of the greatest ones ever made with Hillary Clinton, just got Bill Clinton sitting behind her and she starts talking about the right. Russians. Russia, yeah. really, you know, and then they started Simon and Garfunkel music, hello darkness, my old and Bill's kind of like, that's right. She looked because she also looked completely crazy. She crazed. Was, and he's just so staring. <laughs> I miss you, Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Where's that plane? I got to get out of this house. <laughs> okay. All righty. Um, where am I here? Um, there's been, there's been talk, Jake Sullivan has been um, uh, uh, promoting having a Xi uh, Biden summit and the through um, uh, English, Chinese English language media, they're basically coal, uh, pouring cold water on it. Um, 
the, and it's really interesting because I think they're looking at what happened in Anchorage and then they saw what happened um, uh, with the, the, the um, Biden Putin um, uh, meeting and basically they're saying, no, we, we want, we want uh, uh, positive things to happen. We want powerful things to happen, okay? Not just a shaking hands and a stalemate because um, what, what um, I mean, look, look, I mean, Biden's road trip was anti-China. Let's put it that way, right, okay? Right. Trying to, you know, circle the wagons here. And um, what's really interesting for me is that, and it, 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 was, it was very intentional to try to corral the Europeans. But see, the thing is that um, um, uh, the policy wonks uh, are, are failing to understand is that with all of their effort and with great success, I must say, of fusing the EU and NATO together, because then it's easier to control it. Well, you're already seeing the fissures happening here, because of course, you know, NATO is going to say, yeah, right, 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 China, okay, you know, you know, and keep, you know, where's that next promotion, you know, uh, uh, 5,000 bureaucrats in, in Brussels, you know, yeah, that's the new game, okay, and, you know, they'll do all of their laundry list of things that they need to do, like the parliament, NATO parliamentary, <laughs> that way still makes me laugh. Um, um, but the, the, the EU itself, is, well, um, you can go play with your little toys that we have to pay for and buy from the Americans, but you know what? That's your little game, but the economy, that ain't a game, okay? It's a big deal, all right? And I, I think there's gonna be growing tensions there because the EU is gonna say, you know, if you cut the you know, NATO on one side, EU on the other side, is that one side is okay, we, it's a threat. And the other one's going to go, uh oh, that's our trading partner. It's our biggest trading partner right now. Right. And no, I think that's, that's exactly growing. Yeah, that's, you're going to see a growing tension. Right. No, that's that's quite, right. no. well, the, the fact is that uh, you have the United States, which is, does want to push uh, NATO into this direction of uh, hostility toward uh, China. So, you know, whatever one's either Russia or it's China, but they want to do that now. You know, the, the Europeans are, are used to the Russian thing, but the China thing, they have no real interest. I mean, look, the Europeans in general, uh, I mean, they're regional. They basically are a regional power and they think regionally. So they think, okay, Russia's there and, you know, okay, well, you know, maybe Russia is a menace to us, but then they're at least somewhere in our neighborhood. I mean, China is not in the, in Euro in the Europeans' neighborhood. So, you know, they, they don't think in those terms. They go, you know, we're, we're going to be taking on China. Why? What, what, what's, what's the big deal there? But they do. <laughs> that's, the, but that's what the United States, of course, wants. And it does want to push uh, the Europeans in that direction. It's going to be a real problem for them. And it's going to be an even bigger problem to push um, the Asian powers into forging any kind of an anti-China alliance. So uh, there's, there's, a real, there's a real problem there in kind of creating an anti-China uh, uh, coalition. I mean, it just, it isn't, <clears throat> it's obvious. Well, the United you know States doesn't like being displaced by China as, you know, the number one global economy, but it's having difficulties, you know, corralling allies to confront China. You know, with, with this, you know, Nate, I think it was even said, you know, uh, Biden was talking about, he said quite publicly about creating a, um, uh, Asian version of, of NATO. And, you know, I, I, I just wonder, I have to wonder who's running these regional desks, because I want to tell you something that, you know, you don't want to hear. So you're going to go to specifically the Japanese, the South Koreans, and the Australians. Right. And so how much do you hate China? I'm thinking about these three countries. Right. Okay, keep that in your mind. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Korea, <laughs> how much do you hate the Japanese? Brought more. <laughs> right. Uh, and, 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 then, and then, you know, then you think of the, the Australians. Who do you hate more? You know, well, we hate China. How, well, do you love Japan? Um, no, we don't, okay? Rem remember when Hirohito was about to die and all of the acolytes, uh, you know, praising him and the Australians came out and they were really thought about, no, 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 okay? We don't see him that way. Yep. You think the Koreans did? You yeah. think the Japan and the, the Chinese did? I mean, again, all of these people, they're thinking we have to push this uh, uh, liberal ideology, our values and all that. No, it doesn't work that way. People don't think that way. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and so the, the U.S. is going to have a, you know, is it, with the quad is going to be hard. With Europe, come on. It's illusory. That's right. No, I, no that's right. Um, so, you know, the uh, thumbs down is uh, NATO, which is always a, an, an amazingly insolent organization. 
yesterday expressed outrage that Russia announced that it intends to uh, formally exit uh, the Open Skies Treaty in December of this year. Uh, I mean, they'd already announced that they intended to do it, you know, in a couple of weeks ago, but they said it will formally be uh, uh, done deal in December of this year. NATO issued a statement that this is an absolute outrage. Uh, <laughs> you think, well, who actually walked out on the open sky streets? I mean, this is, the Russians said, you know, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, no, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. You're, you're a liar and a cheat. We're going to do it. Uh, and, then, and then NATO expresses out, right, what Russia is doing is absolutely <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> but it, it was the same with when, <laughs> when, when uh, the United I didn't really, I, you didn't understand what I meant. <laughs> That's yeah. like a bad date. <laughs> You remember, you remember when, when the United States first withdrew from the Open Skies Treaty, and so they said, okay, you know, obviously Russia can no longer fly over our territory. And then, you know, they, and then Russia, of course, said, okay, to the United States, well, you can't fly over our territory. But the European NATO member said, yeah, but we can fly over your territory, can't you? Uh, no, you can't. You, you are United States partners. So anything you learn about us, you're going to pass it on. Well, that's oh, we won't share it. Well, right, we won't share it. Oh, we won't share it. <laughs> no, we won't share it. We, we pretty promise. <laughs> yeah, like. like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we won't share it. Well, you know what it is. The Bulgarians don't cough it up. No, no buffet for you next week. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> you'll be on the you'll be on the no buffet list. That's right. <laughs> that is just so silly. <laughs> you know what? It shows that the um, uh, comms office at NATO just did, it was a slow day. OK, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, it, it was. I mean, there was nothing else to do. Can we talk about values? Yeah, you know, I kind of got a boy. We talked about values yesterday. Okay, how about Russia's violating treaties? Got it. Russia is violating a treaty. All right. Um, Kevin McCarthy, thumbs down. Mm -hmm. Again, Good. we should just tattoo it on his face, okay? Because there's bi a, a bipartisan legislation trying to get off the ground to go after these big tech monopolies. And guess who is dragging his feet? Yeah, yeah. The, the House Minority Leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just shows you that he is worthless. Right. Worthless. Right. Yeah. He uh, be driven out of Congress. Right. Go live with Frank. Right. We don't care. That's I mean, I, 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 this makes my blood boil. Yeah. So, you know, and it's because some of his closest aides are, you know, in bed with big tech, like so many other people here. Right. Well, you know, where's the backbone? Yeah, well, okay. that's it. Because you just I... complain and whine. And when push comes to shove, we have a century long tradition of breaking up trust. So you get on the case. No, Damn no. it. But they got they, these are people who are, you know, in hoc to big tech. And of course, big tech is more powerful than any of the, the, the old uh, robber barons. I mean, they're much more powerful than uh, John D. Rockefeller was. I mean, this, you know, th th these people who really are dangerous and we've seen what they do when, you know, the, when they collude in order to destroy any possible competition, how they just uh, get their ore into everything. Uh, and, you know, and so you would have thought it's a no brainer for a Republican leader, particularly as you see, this big tech is very hostile to Republicans. I mean, they, you know, the kind of the, the kids who work there, they hate Republicans, but he can't do it because his money, money comes to him and, and he needs the money. Um, it, it really is a disgrace because, you know, here you've got an opportunity, you know, Democrats, the Republicans can actually work together and, and do something about uh, these people. <laughs> they are a dangerous group of people. But no, Kevin McCarthy, no, he, he, he needs his money. On the gaggle, he will be ever for, be forever now. Kevin, thumbs down, McCarthy. That's Sorry, right. you earned it, big guy. You earned it. Okay? That's it. That, yeah, that, that's a, a very good one. Um, I have a, um, a, a thumbs up. Um, I think that we, we talked about this earlier this week, that that um, Revolver uh, news story has shaken up uh, the debate about um, uh, January the 6th. In much the same way, I think when um, the, the, uh, the, uh, Devin, Devin Nunes, when he disclosed that uh, the FBI basically got its uh, warrants 
the, its surveillance warrant against Carter Page. It was exclusively based on that garbage of the Steele dossier. That shook up the Russiagate story. And the Russiagate has never really recovered. Of course, they immediately tossed out, oh, Devin Nunes is talking absolute rubbish. It's all nonsense, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. Going around. But basically, Devin Nunes, everything he said was correct. So the same way people are now doing the same thing with uh, with this revolver news stories. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a perfectly innocent explanation about these un unindicted tokens per system and the fact that there are all these people who are, un you know, Listening. one person, two person, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the, the, the FBI, DOJ, they, they, they wouldn't do such a thing. They, no, they, they do it all the time. Exactly. No, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. They do it all the time. We know, I, I get that, you know, get guarantee that, you know, the next phase will be, uh, all right, maybe there were some FBI people involved, but they were only involved in a very minor capacity. That's phase two. Phase three will be, well, it's, yes, they were involved, and it's a bloody good thing that they were involved because we really needed to get to the bottom of this. And then phase four will be, okay, all right, well, this is really boring. Uh, time to move on. We know all this, move on, old story. That I, I bet you anything, that's the, the four phases we're now going to go through with this story. Yeah, and everyone that's convicted, they'll say, and then you have a lifetime gag order. Right. Where you go back in the slammer. Right. Okay, yeah. absolute intimidation. But that's what authoritarian regimes do, okay? Right. Absolutely. I, I, I've said this, George, for ever since January 6th, this is going to get nasty, it's going to get people angry, and it's going to leave a scar forever, okay? Right. I'm absolutely convinced of this. Well, I think so, and I think it was obvious in the immediate aftermath of January the 6th, we were talking about this, that there was something about this whole story that didn't make sense. You know, Trump supporters just don't behave in that way. I mean, it, it just, they, that's not how I they- mean, but, do, but, but what little of the footage that we have seen, okay, what, let's, let's go back in time, everyone. Think of the like the um, the barrier that was being used. Okay, that's the first image that, right. that we were fed, and it stays with you. Yes. But Chewbacca guy. Now right. I've seen. You know, we need to be peaceful. We're, we we right. told the police. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Here, we need to be peaceful. We only came here to have our voices heard. And 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 it's very interesting. I don't know who did it because it was kind of an interesting angle, kind of going up on it. He, right. he looked completely harmless with his little hairdo and yes. you know whatever he was carrying there. And, and and they're making him to turn out that he was like the Grim Reaper. That's right. No. But that's, that's right. I mean, but I mean. That's it. That, but now there's footage emerging with people calling for, yeah, let's storm the, the Capitol. And everyone is saying, no, 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 Antifa, Antifa, Antifa. So you can see that the people at, in, at, there at the time already sensed that those who were calling for violence were not Trump people. These were Antifa. You know, this, this, this is footage that is already now emerging. That they're shouting, Antifa, you know, don't do this. The one who's crying, yeah, let's storm the Capitol. Well, Tucker did one of his monologues on this, which I think was one of the best monologues he's ever had. And he's had some really good ones here. The reaction to him in legacy media was swift and harsh, which right. means he's over the target. He's yes, exactly. really close over the target. They wouldn't have reacted with such ferocity because they know it's coming. They know it's coming and they're gonna to have to try to way to spin it. Of course, at the end of the day, it was probably the Russians who did it because that's yes, the easiest right, right, thing for right. these people to do, okay? Cool. Um, yes. Mark my word, mark my words. <laughs> he had a Russian sounding name. That's a Ukrainian name. Oh, really? No, it's a Polish name. Huh? Okay, well, you, know, you know the difference between the names. Okay, great. You, you get this stuff all the time. It's, it, it just, it's mind boggling. All right, um, I said I would uh, kind of continue with the TYT uh, story. Um, some of our um, uh, uh, viewers probably uh, are aware that the program Rising that was on uh, Hill TV that was hosted by uh, Crystal Ball and uh, Sagar and, and Jetty, they left, I guess now it's about two or three weeks now. And um, they have reemerged uh, 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 with their own podcast called um, Breaking Points. Uh, and I'm not just saying this to do to uh, uh, you know give them a shout out. Um, I, I, through time, I disagreed more and more with both of them. Okay, one is progressive, one is conservative. Well, Sagar's conservatism, I, I'm not sure I particularly follow sometimes. And Crystal, she's true to form. She's just way out there on the left. Okay. I like them both and I do watch their program because it challenges me. There's nothing on cable that ever challenges you, okay? It makes you angry, that's what they want you to do, they make you angry, 
but they don't they don't make you think. And I give, I give a hat tip to um, uh, Crystal and to Segar because they do make me think, even though even though quite often I disagree with both of them. Why am I bringing this up? Is it well the program Rising that has been vacated by Crystal and Segar has been repopulated with some of the worst people I've ever seen on tele or television like because it's a podcast. I mean, breathtakingly bad. And I've been in this business a long time. Okay, it's awful. And the reason why I'm bringing it up because they had they had um, um, uh, Jenk Uger on, yeah. which is very, very odd because you have to remember, you know, Crystal Sagar, um, 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 uh, uh, Jimmy Dore, Jenk Uger, and, and, and not too long ago, they populated the same space, okay, with different individual uh, um, personalities and all of that. But they, 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 from an outsider looking in, this is the same clan, same tribe of people. And so, so when uh, Crystal and Sagar left, the program Rising crashed, I mean, badly. And it continues to, and then they bring in someone like Jenk Yoker, like insult to injury. It's like, this is like decapitation television right now. You really are destroying your brand here. Here, here real progressives are enraged by the uh, the uh, uh, bad, bad behavior of Cenk Uger and uh, Anna Kasparian, which are, are just total fakes. And I think everyone should refer to Anna as 86. That looks like her IQ to me, okay? And and so the, 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 the Hill thinking they're gonna try to save the day brings on the most unpopular person on the left right now, Cenk Uger, apparently two days in a row. So it shows the uh, rank stupidity of the Hill, which, if it hadn't been for Rising, the original uh, iteration, I, I, I would stumble across it on YouTube, but I would never go there. And you know what? Never, I suggest to our viewers, never ever go there again. Right, no, I, The Hill is an absolutely dreadful uh, publication. I mean, it's, it's a, it really is, reads like something uh, that is written within the, the DNC headquarters. I mean, this is, you know, this, this is this story. This is your story about um, the Republicans. This is your story about Trump. This is your story about uh, Kamala Harris. And then, you know, every single story just simply uh, regurgitates uh, all of the De Democratic Party talking points. I mean, I, I don't understand who actually reads the hill. I mean, what's the point? I mean, you might as well just go straight to the DNC website and get all their talking points about, about every topic under the sun. Why, why would you want to go to the Hill to get it all? So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, it's just- hey, my, my point is, is that they had actually something going for them. Right, they had something and going, they, yeah. They, 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 quote, unquote, yeah. infinite wisdom of the people at the Hill is just yeah. that they have no idea what they're doing. They, they two people from the outside built it up for them and they're and they've been on a three week demolition tour ever since it's amazing to watch right uh so another uh, uh thumbs down uh for me is that uh, there was this very senior uh naval admiral uh oh, yeah. testifying on the hill and he was talking about this um uh, reading list that they have uh, prepared for the sailors, you know, the volunteers, people who, you know, anyone who's in the Navy is a volunteer. So they've, you know, they've given them this uh, reading list, uh, one of which is um, uh, written by this, this strange guy, this um, Kemal Ibrahim, um, full of all sorts of absolute nonsense, you know, like the critical race theory nonsense. And when uh, the uh, congressman confronted this very senior figure, I mean, he's the chief of naval operations at the US Navy, he said, well, you know, what, what is this garbage that you hope you've got on your reading list? Um, he simply had no answer. Uh, you know, he just said, well, I'm not gonna get, get into, you know, selective quotes. It doesn't matter the selective quotes, why are you putting rubbish like this you know, basically saying all white people are racist, you know, that's in, in, in the DNA of white people to be racist. Why is this on your reading list? And he had no answer to that. And it really gives you a very embarrassing picture of sort of the woke military. Uh, you know, these are the people who now hold the most senior position. And of course, it, it, it is a case of, you know, the people who do get promoted are the ones who know how to suck up to the politicians. So they, you know, therefore you know what the, you know, the, this is what your democratic paymasters want to hear. That's how you get rise within the navy. Not people with military competence. Uh, it's people who who know how to suck up. 
and it was a truly embarrassing performance. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'd have to wonder, you know, what they, what kind of sailors that they're preparing. I, I mean, I suppose these are they're preparing them for wine parties and brunches, okay, right. yeah, yeah, to discuss yeah. critical race theory right. and you know um, the most egregious mic uh, microaggression that I have heard this week. Okay, which of course I can I snitched on someone. Okay, I mean. Is, is this what you're training? I mean, why don't you just send them to, you know, uh, uh, Harvard and Yale? I mean, right. you know, uh, right. and give them plastic toys to shoot right. at each other. Right. I mean, I, you know, I hate militarism and I don't like what the US military does, but I mean, um, every military should um, protect its um, uh, sovereignty. So, I mean, I, can right. you, I mean, you, you have, have enough have people that can protect the country? Okay. Yeah, you have to be an effective military force. And you think of people who are entering the military, they don't really want to hear this kind of stuff. I mean, it's like- What do you think they joined the military? They joined the military to escape this. I mean, as you say, if they wanted to hear this, they would go straight to the community college or, you know, for some, you know, you know sign up you know, for some rubbish university for gender studies or uh, African-American studies. I mean, that's not why they sign up for the Navy, but that, that's, you know, the woke military. And here is this extremely senior admiral who's, you know, A-OK -okay with it. Yeah, but I mean, I, 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 no one can explain to me if they want to teach them this critical race theory and hate white people, hate yourself, um, then what? Then what's the the, uh, the the military mission of the United States? Almost always is right. uh, pointed at brown people, yellow right. people. Right. I mean, I mean, uh, what's going to happen to these sailors? You're, 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 you're on a destroyer saying, right. We can't do that, sir, because you know they're minority people. These people are victims, um, and I'm white, so I can't pull the trigger. Right. Right. Well, maybe right. they shouldn't pull the trigger, but they, they right. shouldn't that for but for different reasons. Okay. Right. No, I, think I, I mean, I, 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 do they think this out? Okay? Well, that's why probably they want to go to war with Russia. Because at least they're white people. I mean, they can, you know, they, you know, then they, they don't feel so bad about it. I mean, you know, same way when they were bombing Serbs. Okay, that's good. We can bomb Serbs because they're white people. So I mean, so but yeah, but uh, but yeah, true. You can't you can't always do that. But uh, but but probably if you ask this naval these naval guys, they're probably saying, well, yeah, let's let's then fight against some some white people. Let's go fight Russian. So here we go. That's an, we have to fight Russia for critical race theory. That's I mean, it. Yeah. We're yeah. in a very weird, bad place. You know, I can hear the Twilight Zone theme song in the back of my head. <laughs> um, I, I have um, thumbs down. GOP shows it has no ideological backbone and is bankrupt. I, I think it was going back to the uh, Juneteenth uh, vote right, right, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, that you and I have made a video about. Um, yeah, it just the, the GOP is just in a, such a bad, bad place, and and they and they have to resolve the issue with Trump uh, one way or another. Um, as I said in the last video that we made, I mean, uh, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty four is elections of low hanging fruit, but I don't think they have the brain power to pick the low hanging fruit. Okay, because uh, no, hey, I, I, you know, because if you're going to you know, you can't avoid the culture wars, but you better if you're going to be involved in it, think smart. Just don't freeze. Right. Maybe they won't see us, George. That's it, Maybe yeah. they'll be no, I, I, I think that you would, you would have thought that this is something that they could have made a, uh, a stand on. They chose not to. They think, oh, great, you know, they're going to leave us alone. No, they're not going to leave you alone. Uh, and so they, I, I think it was embarrassing that they put up so little resistance to this. Um, and yeah, I mean, if they don't really stand for anything and not, nothing that people care about, um, then they're not going to- Nothing that people care about. Good, thank you. Perfect. That's, yeah. Then, you know, the, you know, their assumption, oh, well, elections are cyclical by 2022. People will be sick of the Democrats, sick of Biden, and they're going to vote for us. Don't bank on it. I mean, uh, you know, like, you know, when they did that in 94, when Gingrich uh, pulled off that, that amazing coup in 94, when he, the Republicans after 40 years won back the House, they, they seem to stand for something. Remember, Gingrich had that contract with America. Uh, they had a, a strong program. In 2010, again, when they took back the House, that was Obamacare. I mean, there are people who are very concerned about Obamacare. They pulled it off. Don't assume that all these, that it's just going to be, oh, it's all cyclical and, you know, we're going to get the House back. Um, <laughs> you know, Biden's very cunning. And, I, and uh, I, 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 he's not, he's not going to be a pushover. Uh, and I think the Republicans are again just saying, oh, we don't have to offer anything. We can just sit back and, and you know, it's just cyclical and we'll be back in power. Never, never take anything for granted, yeah. ever.
Yeah. Oh yeah, well, historically speak, well, fine, but that's a trend, okay? And then but new trends can start, folks, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, no, that, that's right. Except uh, because the exception can become the rule, all right? Right, I, I, I agree. And I, I think, you know, with, with elections, you have to go out and win an election. The, the idea that we can just sit back and it's, it's all um, cyclical, and that the, the, the people are going to obviously turn against Biden in 2022 uh, because they always have done. Um, I you know, don't count on it. <laughs> so so I, I, I think that uh, if the Republicans offer as little and they don't seem to be offering anything very much, uh, I, 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 their victory is by no means a foregone conclusion. Yeah, I, I, it's, you, you bring up such a good point. What do they stand for? Right. And what do they stand for that people care about? I have no idea. Right. And the and the caliber of them of this leadership, yeah. it is astounding how stupid and banal they are. Right. I remember it's, McCarthy. McCarthy wanted um, uh, Liz Cheney there. I remember he actually wanted that. And what the hell was McCarthy thinking in having Liz Cheney there for the, in the number three position? I mean, McCarthy had to be pretty much hit, whacked over the head before he finally abandoned uh, Liz Cheney. I mean, she, she was treating him with such open contempt that he finally, you know, even he realized that, hey, I, I better get rid of her. Uh, but but he, he wanted to keep her on. For all his failures, Newt Gingrich was very charismatic. In, yeah. in, 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 and then Kevin McCarthy, he's got the charisma of an empty milk carton, okay? Right. Yeah, he really does always look like the, the deer in the headlights. I mean, he always looks terrified. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he never shows any leadership. No, he has no, no leadership skills. No, 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 no. The fact that he was, you know, we'll, get, we'll give Liz another chance. Right. It's time for you to resign. I think so. Not only resign from the leadership, get the F out of the house. You're, you're, you're more, you, you are toxic. You are a cancer that's on the party. Right. Get out. That's, yeah. Yeah. You know, and when I, I guess you got the impression I don't like the guy. <laughs> you know, when Tucker exposed that that story about that he was he was a roommate with um, Frank <laughs> Frank Luntz, he said, "Oh well, that was okay. I mean, I was, you know, he's just a good friend of mine." He's like, the guy the guy's a lobbyist, and you you say you know, he's your roommate. And he's, oh no no, he's just a good friend of mine. See Kevin McCarthy wearing his little bunny slippers walking around. Can can you see that? You know, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, I really, really disdain that guy. Absolutely. I really do. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, well, and almost all the rest of them. Okay, I, I and, and and this whole um, um, theater of night after night pulling them on on uh, on Fox News programs, and it just it just so nauseating. Can you talk about policy once in a while? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so the, another uh, thumbs up is there's a new publishing venture uh, formed by these um, two, you know, senior figures in the uh, New York publishing industry. The, the publishing venture is called All Season Press. Um, like the name. Yeah, and it seems like they're going to be uh, publishing people who today are not going to get you know, publishing contracts. In other words, not, not because they're, they're writing books that have no commercial interest, but they won't get contracts because the, the employees who work in the biggest publishing houses will protest. And the, the CEOs of these companies that, who are all Kevin McCarthy types will, will all cave and say, okay, we won't, we won't sign a contract with, with... I mean, can you imagine any time that whereby uh, it would be unthinkable for any publishing house to sign a book contract with a former president. I mean, that is the most lucrative uh, contract there is, <laughs> the memoirs of the former president. Uh, and yet it's unthinkable that any uh, major publishing house would sign a contract with Donald Trump. Uh, I don't know whether All Season Press will, will sign a contract, but they've said they, you know, they, they would be very excited about doing so. Uh, we don't know what Trump's plans are about writing his memoirs, but a memoirs of a former president is an important historic document. Who the hell cares about these little twerps who work in these publishing houses? They don't like Trump. It's an important historic document. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know if I would memoirs. read it. 
I don't know if I would read Trump's memoir, but if he had an, uh, an audio version of it, I might, I certainly but would. Is, you, know, but it's, you know, it's memoirs. It's a record. It's a record of what happened during the Trump but don't, you, don't you see the qualitative difference? I mean, ha hearing them say it, that it would, right. I, because it would be so much more powerful. Because right. I don't think of Trump as a man of the printed word. I think of him as, you know, <laughs> loser, big league, right. and all that. I mean, that, you, and it's really funny because, you know, well, uh, that's interview he did with Hannity again. Oh my God, I was like, it's like someone scratching against a blackboard, you know, with Hannity's right. voice there. Right. Um, just as bad as the first one he right. did with him. Um, so this, I would like to hear what he had. How how did he understand his presidency? I would be right. very, but, very- but you Also remember, this is a guy who has a knack for commercial success because his book, The Art of the Deal, which he wrote, I guess, in the late eighties, massive, massive bestseller. I mean, it was, you know, I think it was the most biggest bestseller any, of any bus, business book ever. And I think then he did the, um, he did the follow-up, also a massive bestseller. Then of course he had his TV show, the, um, what was it? The Entrepreneur. Apprentice. The Apprentice, Apprentice that's right. The, uh, yeah, again, massive success. So it's, you know, you know, it's not just, you know, a former president's memoirs. It's also a former president who knows how to sell. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and of course, his, his critics should buy it to say he's a liar. I mean, everybody wins. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then, and the other, so, so therefore, it, it, it's just an amazing situation. I mean, I, I find it just, it, you know, extraordinary that publishers are so cowed by their employees. Look, these, uh, these jobs, you know, they're not well paying, but everybody hungers to be working at Simon Schuster uh, or at Little Brown or any any of these big, big Hachette, all these big publishing houses. So, if, you know, if somebody says, I, I resign because in protest of the Trump's memoirs, good, we've got somebody else to take your yeah, job. Yeah, and then we can juxtapose it as that apparently Hunter's an artist right now. Right. He's he's like, his, he paints with a straw, apparently, okay? <laughs> uh, maybe they don't let him use anything sharper than that. I don't know. Um, um, but you know, it, and it's being reported that you know he's, he, he could potentially sell a piece or has sold a piece for a half a million dollars. Well, that's right, and that is that in itself is quite sinister because yeah, but I mean the people yeah. that buy it, it's not disclosed. So right, I mean, exactly, and good old yeah. Hunter, pay yeah. to play, yeah. <laughs> and since we know about the ten percent for the big guy, um, you know, we, you know, this is basically a money laundering scheme, uh, you know, going. To the whole Biden family, I, I don't think Hunter's just going to keep all of it. So, it's, it's a, yeah, I mean, he's got to contribute. It's a very sinister aspect he's, to it. He's got to contribute to the family operation, right, right. even after everything's been said and done. He's got to, you know, he's got to put in his share, okay? Because right. big guy will get angry. <laughs> Lunacy that we live in. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, but it is interesting. Again, you know, like it's a little like we're talking about publishing. That, that it's it's a it's a way of Payoffs uh, for powerful people. You know, you give you give you greasing palms with massive, ridiculous uh, contracts that you know the publishers are never going to get money for. But it's basically a payoff. So in the same way, with these ridiculous, you know, sums for artwork. I mean, like, you know, what what you know, you know, only the biggest artists in the world command these kinds of fees. You know, half a million. I mean, <laughs> so, but but yeah, again. It's a very, very creepy way of uh, funneling money to powerful people. Yeah, and, and, and the legacy media just says, oh, how nice, this isn't this so nice. Such a nice morning program um, right. story, okay? Right. Yeah. It's, it's very sinister, actually, all of it here, okay? Yep, absolutely. That's it for me. Um, I don't have much more other than <laughs> a quite funny story is that there's an English columnist, probably not all that well known, probably to, to uh, us, to his name of Julie Burchill, uh, who's a kind of a controversial, a bit, bit, you, know, you know, always has slightly quirky take on things. Not, not my cup of tea, but you know, she has a fan club. And she, she had a column in the Daily Telegraph. I'm a regular weekly columnist in the Daily Telegraph. But she tweeted out, uh, apropos of um, Prince Harry's and Meghan Markle's uh, baby, Oh, that they missed uh, the boat in not naming the baby um, Georgina Floydina. Um, <laughs> she got fired by the Telegraph for that, which I thought was very funny. 
That's pretty quirky. Floydina, Floydina. <laughs> she got um, the boot. Yeah, she got the boot. She got the boot. She got fired for that. Yeah. Um, I remember the Telegraph is a quote conservative unquote newspaper. So that that that's again uh, is a measure of you know you know how vigorous the inter conservative intellectual movement is globally. Uh, yeah, she got fired for that. Um, and then she wrote a kind of an amusing article uh, in the Daily Mail in which she said, you know, okay, well, I've gone by the Telegraph, but I have to say, you know, in all the years I worked there, every time I had an interesting idea for an article, they always squelched it uh, and instead gave me the most boring assignments to write. I thought the most, every writer who ever written a column would say, would probably agree with that. Yeah, you know, whenever you deal with editors, you know, you have an interesting idea, Every, the editors immediately squelch it and instead they want you to write something utterly predictable and pedestrian. So that's kind of amusing. Uh, well, I, I mean, and uh, um, God rest his soul, that's what made um, Robert Fisk such an interesting writer. Um, uh, um, he was one of the very few that could say, no, I'm going to do what I want. Right. I, I don't remember, I'll probably screw it up, but I mean, he was at the Telegraph that went to the Independent. Oh, he's been, he he was, was, yeah, he, no, he, was at, he was at the Times. I remember, you know, you know. Yeah, but I mean, they, 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 they the changed. Times, and then he went to the Independent. But he, he just said, I quit, I quit. Yep. Because yep. They, they changed his story and he was instantly snapped up. Yep. Um, he, he has um, uh, a tome of a, uh, edited uh, uh, of his article. I mean, it, it's literally this thick, okay? Right, right. And, um, uh, it's extremely, extremely good. I, I, something civilization, fight for civilization. Um, um, he, I, I met, uh, I, knew, I met him over the phone many, many times. Very, very interesting character to talk to. And I'll tell you, he liked the talk okay, a lot. Okay. So um, again, these are just um, bygone days. It doesn't happen anymore. Do you think Peter Baker at the Washington Post gets into a squabble? Yes. You know, he probably just gets on both knees, okay? Right. Because, well, he's just a conduit for the, the, the deep state. I mean, right. his job's already done for him. Must be great, you know, a lot of perks there. Yeah, no, I, I, that's it. But I think that's, that, <laughs> it, it, it is kind of a, an amusing thing. I mean, it's like, yeah, you know, the editors, they don't want to rock any boats. Uh, so you come up with a, with an interesting take on something, and you're, nah, I, I don't like it. Um, let's do what we did last week. Uh, you know, that's it. Nice and safe. We, we're, we're... And, and you know, because people use search engines, use Trump's name more often. Oh, that's okay, it. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's exactly that's, that. Yeah, that's right. It's very uh, the very amusing aspect. There was an article in um, Politico yesterday, um, which was all about basically the, the the fight within the Supreme Court between Alito. And, um, and Roberts, and the headline of the political story was like, fight in Trump's court. You know, what the hell is sort of Trump's court? Neither Alito nor Roberts was appointed by Trump. It's not even, how do you call it Trump's court anyway, but you have to put Trump into the headline, otherwise no one's gonna click on it. It's so, I mean, it's, so, yeah, it's, it's like the like it's like the eighth paragraph say Trump appointed three. Uh, yeah, three. Uh, three. But, and, and that's, and, it. And, that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. it. It's peripheral to the story. So it's, it's about the Lita versus Roberts. So, but but again, you know, oh go. We, we're not getting any clicks. Let's put Trump in, in there. It's it's so interesting how one man was able to change our narratives, our discourse to such a degree. Because it, it, again, you know, looking at the fawning coverage of Biden, which if you just look at the footage, I can't see how you could possibly right. fawn over that. I mean, no, any normal person would say, you know, he's got to, you know, maybe he should have been given that speech sitting down. Okay. It was probably hot outside. He was an elderly man. Okay. Right. And, but everything was in juxtaposition to Trump. Which I'm sick and tired of hearing about. Okay, we got pressing issues ahead, in front of us right now. Yeah, yeah, no, if everything is through the lens of Trump. You're missing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what what else are you going to do? I mean, you you talk about probably the most boring uh, president uh, the United States has ever had. I mean, you're going to you know people used to complain about how boring Gerald Ford was, but Gerald Ford could at least talk coherently. Jimmy Carter was boring, but Jimmy Carter was at least, he was a kind of a nerdy guy. He, had, he was intellectual. Yeah. yeah, you know, he had a grasp of detail. He really made a, a point of, you know, reading his <laughs> briefing books and mastering all the details. He, you had to be impressed by Carter's just, you know, knowledge of, of, of so many things. 
But this guy, I mean, he just rambles. I mean, trying to understand where the hell any of this is going I mean, is, is actually hard work. Just read those the transcripts of his news conference. I mean, it, it, you know, you, you just can't make head or tail of any of it. Yeah, when you, when you read the transcript, if you focus, you can hear the crickets. <laughs> You know, you know what the default position is turning into for the Biden Harris administration? A cackle. Really? Yeah. I mean, because even Joe's picking up on the cackle thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, the cackle years. <laughs> all right. That's it for me. Yeah, I'm done as well. Uh, all right. Well, we some... are on locals. Everyone, yeah. listen up. Everyone, listen up. Go to locals, type in thegaggle.locals.com. Um, uh, everything is there. We have a tip jar which we've dubbed uh, the buddy tip jar. And yep. buddy is and decided in a very, very strict profit sharing. Okay. Yeah, yes, we are all yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. And I'm not happy about that. I'm going to be pushing money <laughs> out of the way. All right. You know, you're too small for this, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Uh, so tip jar, uh, please support us, you know, whatever way you can. It helps us enormous amount. And uh, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.